It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cards and the Broncos, next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies, just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Arizona Cardinals taking on the Denver Broncos. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. Happy to be with you. And, CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical. Who wins up front? Who runs the ball the best and controls the clock? They will come out the victor. And off we go from Denver. Now Greg Dorch going to bring it out of the end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Here come the Cardinals, and it is Kyler Murray from Oklahoma who leads him out. And when you have a guy like Kyler Murray under center, it not only opens up your playbook, it allows you to draw up even more plays because he's among the best dual threat quarterbacks in the league and a true playmaker. If flushed out of the pocket, he might even be more dangerous. The next step for him, being able to throw on rhythm and deliver from the pocket. First play and a first pass for Murray. That pass completed to Dorch. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Here's Murray. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. A Cardinal first down on a gain of 13. That's a very nice game there. A confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way you press the hole. Absolutely perfect. So two first downs and that moves the ball to the 42 now first and 10. Again a run with Connor. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48 yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. A couple of nice carries back-to-back -back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare-bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time, that's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. 
It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Play fake. Murray. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Broncos are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. The beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100-plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. Throwing on first down, McCarthy. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. And we're going to see this offense try and spread the field a little bit and utilize the outside third of the field, especially against man coverage. But that time, the defense was up to the task, forcing the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A first carry now. This is Williams. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. On fourth down, it's Riley Dixon on now to kick it away for Denver. Greg George, deep for Arizona. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Cards will take over first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He's going to air one out. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Second and 10. Throwing now is Murray. Got his man, it's Dorch. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Wilson's got it complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready, because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy, either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. Because sometimes it's just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 55 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. 
I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 38. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. From the 29, here's second down and one. Shotgun now for Murray. Open his swing, the tight end. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Here's second and three. Murray a give. This is Connor. And all the way down inside the five to the four it's a good gain of 11 sets him up first and goal that o-line they cleared a big hole there on that run the athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve and we're seeing it here not only the control and things right at the line of scrimmage but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels you know get to linebacker spot the secondary spot getting all the that's to mcbride and he has it touchdown cardinals Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Cardinals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. Extra point good by Prater. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was capped off by a touchdown reception from Trey McBride. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and five now from the 22. On the counter, here's Williams. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. 
He'll find his tight end. It's Adam Troutman. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 at a first. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that, the nickel look. Five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football. Second and a couple as they've got it as we resume action. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes with a big third down coming up. He's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Watching that run takes me back to something a famous old coach once said. Any player he wants on his team, he wants him to be agile, mobile, and most definitely hostile. They run again with the fullback, Burton. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. After a play like that, it should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Williams. We'll get down close to the goal line, but not in, as he'll be marked down at the one. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Williams again. And this time he get in. Touchdown, Denver. So the second down line really didn't work. They run it again on third down to get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, it almost felt like the offensive line said, again, mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one along a 11 play drive. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. Here, ready to take over. 
So, so both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense has just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And he's taken down, he's able to slip across the 35. 91 yards rushing now for Connor and a first down. A good, good run there off right tackle in old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another first down this time on a game of 19. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him up to the second mark in yardage. And we're still in the second quarter. Back to back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. Play action. Now, now it's Murray. Yeah, he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Turns, Turns out to be a great idea to top that one. Good for 24 yards. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes. He could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent. But the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape. And they paid dearly for not locking up. On first and 10 is Counter. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. And that's the type of play that will fire the defense. Hold him to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all. But they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They work now on second and nine. Murray giving it Counter on the option. The touchdown out is Prater to kick. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. The Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams, who shined the spotlight on him. So a six-carry drive, the last go-around touchdown on the end. We'll see if they can do what they have here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep the ball in the boot just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it, is it heavy? Is it that heavy? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light, right? So keep giving it to him and let him do his work. It's not going to slow it down. It's light for me. It's definitely light for him. He's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. He felt the pressure coming there. That was a good job of just making something out of nothing, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, took the hit and still made the play. You know, when we talk about runners, right, and on running plays, runs after contact, we call that getting dirty yards, tough, gritty ones. To me, that's like the version of a dirty pass. He knows he's going to get smacked. He gets still delivers the football and picks up good yardage. And Williams is going to pick up Broncos first down 
is the tackle going to be made up at the 37? I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of people thinking, take a shot down. It's a great spot for it. I, I say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. Right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. First and 10 at the 11. Back to throw. McCarthy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his tight read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last possession. But the coverage hell, it goes incomplete. Now it's second and 10. In motion left goes Reynolds. They'll fake the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle to Williams. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Javante Williams with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Broncos are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Lutz good on the extra point. And we are tied at 14. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This taken in at the goal line. 
And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And he will take this down to the 10-yard line. There's never a good place on the field to fumble the ball. Let's just call it as it is. But definitely not in your own red zone. <laughs> in your own red zone, <laughs> it's heightened, isn't it? Because you're almost automatically giving up a score and the momentum, and everything just changes for your team. Yeah, so the kickoff fumble now, great field position. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Reynolds will go in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now second and nine from the 10. Looking to throw, McCarthy. This is caught. Touchdown, Broncos. Josh Reynolds from 10 yards out, and the Broncos have broken the tie. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open in the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Lutz with the extra point, and the lead is now 21-14. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Here's Murray. And this will be swung out here for counter. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here now a third down and eight. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride. And he was able to run free after the catch. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw is Murray. Screen pass to Connor. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. He's had success running the football, and this is more or less an extension of that because they drop it off to him on the screen. And I'll bet he's thinking to himself, if I didn't have to slow up a bit here in traffic, I could have really made something out of that one. 
Throwing again, Murray. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Javante Williams and the rest of the Bronco offense back out onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Throwing to start the drive. McCarthy. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. From the 21, it's second and 10. To throw again. McCarthy. That is caught. Josh Reynolds. Now he'll get this one way up just shy of a 45-yard line. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First and 10, McCarthy. He'll find Sutton on the right side complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. There goes a deep ball in zone. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Off the play fake, McCarthy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 30. Four seconds left, and there's the timeout. In field goal range and a chance to tack on three before intermission. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the 1-2 to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Yeah. 
So we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was former Tar Heel Javante Williams with a solid first half. He chipped in a couple of touchdown runs as he was running with determination right from the word go. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Nice, satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second and five. They run it again with Williams. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That's now consecutive five-yard carries to pick up the first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Brought down by Jalen Thompson. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. I can assure you setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Back to throw. McCarthy, it's complete to Williams. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. 
152 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. They run behind center with Cotter. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Here now second and nine from the 39-yard line. Murray going to throw. That is incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Murray. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 44-yard line. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. From the gun, a give to Connor. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Out to his left. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. Connor up the middle. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. Second and six. Again, it's Connor. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, OK, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. Murray going to try to throw on third down. Dancing to his left. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They'll run for it with Connor. And he is in for six. Touchdown, Cardinals. James Conner with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cardinals' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Well, this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. 
And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. Extra point good by Prater. And that cuts the lead to three, 24-21. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. And nothing would excite him more, but I think even more so, his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those <laughs> are some massive men. They begin the drive with Williams. Tackle made there by Buda Baker. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle Everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. From the 31, here's second and five. Operating from the gun, McCarthy. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. I like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. On third down, McCarthy. Open man, that's Patrick. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That's a first down and then some, a 32-yard pickup. I don't care what level of football you played. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope <laughs> someone would come free. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. Shoves him aside, and he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 95 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. On first down, McCarthy. His throw incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. A good action to this point in the third quarter, just a three-point game, second and ten. Off play action, McCarthy. That's taken in by Dulcich. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. Off the play fake. McCarthy. Open man is Dulcich, the tight end. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. 
We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. And he's going to get about four down inside the ten to the nine. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Javante Williams, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here... They were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Lutz good on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The football going back over to Arizona now. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Going to look deep for Wilson. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Down the left sideline. Touchdown, Cardinals. Michael Wilson, 75 yards. And the Cardinals have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this. I know you are, too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead is down to a field goal now. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And able to get this out to the 25. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams, we shine the spotlight on him. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt continues to find it throughout this game and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live he might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest he knows how to get there and boy he looks happy when he does he's already bought all the property in the end zone that's the problem he's going to sell to himself now pressure comes and the Cardinals bring him down the sack goes to Chris Barnes and there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Looking to throw. McCarthy. 
That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football into places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. The offense on third down, they've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and 14. Back to throw. McCarthy, he's going to float this one deep right side. That's caught inside the 20. A huge play there for Denver. 63 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Looking to throw. McCarthy. And his throw here is incomplete. Cortland Sutton was the man he was looking for. And it's second down. They'll look to throw again. And he's going to have the hook up to Sutton. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Back to throw. McCarthy. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Greg Dulcich, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Broncos are able to extend their lead. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Lutz with the extra point, And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So the drive there took six plays. And a Greg Dulcich touchdown reception finished that drive off. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 22. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now from the 26. To throw, it's Murray. A yeah, quick throw there is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Here's Murray. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. They get nine yards there, and they get a first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. 
What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Murray a give. This is Connor. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And they're going to get this up to midfield. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And for as poorly as this offense has looked at times, it's the fourth quarter, and they're still in this game. That's a good, confident throw right there. And now, who knows, if you can put a drive together here, you can make something of this game after all. This is Connor running right. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Murray now. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense, and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Murray's got to have this one. That is caught, and he is going to have the Cardinals first down on uh, what will be a big play there on fourth and long. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. So the fourth down conversion has him inside the 40 now, first and 10. Throwing now is Murray. There's a nice move. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. An option handoff given to Connor. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. 
Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. Third and goal. And keep in mind, very possibly four-down territory. Murray now to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And here he'll get it down to the seven. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Murray and company going for it on fourth. Escaping the pressure right. And that'll be incomplete with a penalty flag here on the field. And I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that thing go. He broke that line of scrimmage and then let it fly, and that's an automatic flag. Yeah, and you know, you don't just lose the five yards there, but you lose a down as well. So he obviously needs that better awareness about what he's going to do. Either tuck it and go or throw it to a target and get that pass away. They'll try and run down some clock with Williams. Zaven Collins there to make the play defensively. You know, I was going to ask you if maybe they should surprise and pass the ball, but where they're at on the field, I think keep it on the ground, right? I like where you're going with this one because field position is going to determine these play calls. And backed up where they are, I don't even think about putting the ball in the air. I tell my running backs, grasp the football, and I tell my offensive line, don't allow any leaks so they get hit immediately when we hand it off. And he will get enough for a first down, and that will lead us to the two-minute warning. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. Now the card's going to call another timeout, their second. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. So here's a third and 14. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Kyler Murray now in the Cardinal offense. Down by 10, a minute 44 to go. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. To throw is Murray. And his throw is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Another try, second and ten now. Now Murray. 
Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. Murray to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And this is four down territory here. They know down two scores at this late stage, 10 yard passes aren't going to do it. So they took the shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Here we go. This is fourth down. They're going for it. Hits Murray. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's... And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the officials and the folks in New York got a second look at this one, and the call is going to be overturned. And we'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They looked like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So that'll do it for us for Charles.